So how, uh, hi, I am Brian Stewart, and today I'm going to be talking to you all about imposter syndrome and burnout, the everything to know, the how do you know you have it, what you can do about it, as well as a few tips for both of them. So let's get started. So first off, what is imposter syndrome, right? It is when you doubt yourself because you feel you lack the skills, tools, or you discredit your successes to luck, connections, or being at the right time at the right place. And then on the bottom, I have imposter because I thought it'd be funny. Got to gotta start out on comedy. So what can trigger imposter syndrome? So it can be a new job or a new role, or it can even you being promoted. Maybe you thought that you didn't deserve that job, or maybe you thought that you didn't deserve that promotion, and somebody else or one of your friends was more skilled that you think should have got it. It can be can, it can be perfectionism. It can also be family related. You can either have minimal support, but your high conflict on your dreams and what you want to do, or on the other end. Your family could be high achievers, and you're just trying to keep up with the amount of work that they're doing compared to you. It can also be triggered by you putting too much on yourself, or you're trying to do all at once. I know that I have been guilty of this multiple times. You also expect a lot from yourself, so you're constantly pushing yourself to do more. And yeah. So here are some signs that you have imposter syndrome. The first one can be persuasive self self doubt characterized by your past, current, and future plans. The second one can be you have a consistent fear that you're going to be quote unquote found out or discovered as a fraud despite all your successes. It can also be when you achieve something you discredit it as luck or a fluke or you just being at the right time at the right place you also may look for validation in authority figures this can be a boss a family member or a friend and you give them the power to dictate whether or not you'll be successful and then you expect a lot from yourself i know that i am guilty of doing this because i do expect a lot from myself so some of the, or these are some of the signs that you have it. However, each person is different and may show different signs. So I will, if there are signs that are not on here, then just know that there can be more signs that you have it. So yes, this is a brain. So your day-to-day -day activities, right? You're going on your day-to-day -day coding and then negative thoughts creep into your mind. And now your brain can get overloaded and overworked with these negative thoughts. Thoughts like, give up. You're not going to make it. You're delusional. You suck. You're a failure. You're wasting your time. Everything you did was handed to you. You're a fake. You'll never make it. You'll never be as good as them. Quit already. You rely on Google too much. And then it can feel like this. So someone asks, hey, how are you doing? And you say, I'm doing just fine. When in reality, you have all of these negative thoughts. You suck. You're a failure. You don't know what you're doing. Give up. Stop trying. They know. Nobody likes you. And this is what it can feel like for somebody who is currently going through this. So now, this is a little bit about me and my experiences with imposter syndrome. So when I first started off in a computer science field, it was easy until I hit a raise. Once I hit a raise, I started falling behind, and I remember that the professor at the time had to print out the answers, and I just copied and pasted it because I was new to the field, and I didn't understand that you have to understand what you're doing. So I started questioning myself, right? How can I ever make it to a company if I don't know something as simple as a raise? I rely on Google too much. I'm not good at X, Y, Z. Maybe this major isn't for me. And I remember thinking that last thought literally one month before I graduated with my associate's degree in computer science. 
literally one month, just like maybe I should just change majors. So it is very powerful. And even at the time of making this, right, I'm preparing for internships, which also does include my dream company. And I'm still having doubts despite having the support of everybody I know. And I know I have the effort to put the work in and the passion behind it as well. But I'm going to keep on going because I really, really want this. That's important to keep on going. And don't let the thoughts win. So here's the continuous slash miscellaneous about this presentation. So when I was doing these slides, I still had the feeling of I wasn't doing enough. I could add more. At the time, I timed myself and I had around 20 minutes and I wanted at least one hour. Um, the last current time that I recorded was 30 minutes. I'm okay with that. Also, while writing this, I feel like I need to say more too. So it's not a teaching style type of workshop where I just read off a slide and I can add more input. Also, I didn't want to repeat the same stuff over and over again. And then <laughs> there was a scare on Sunday where I deleted the PowerPoint and I thought I had to start all over again, but I got it back thanks to OneDrive. So here are some actual quotes from people who have real life jobs and work on things that majority of us may use every day. So I'm assuming that a lot of you know what the game League of Legends is, right? They had their, they were working on an exclusive game mode called Clash. It was supposed to release May of 2018. But they had issues in all regions except Japan. So they had to pull the plug on it after working on it for three years. And I got all this, all of this from their dev doodle video. And I highly recommend watching it. Here, here's what someone have to say. We couldn't fix it. And there was like a true breaking moment for all of us. I'm really bad at my job. What happened? This is on me. How do we mess things up so badly? And then even another company, God of War, an intern from God of War, he said that there's a little bit of imposter syndrome when you're winning all these awards. And it's just like, dude, I'm just an intern. Like, I just joined here and I'm getting all the applauds. For those of you that played God of War, he worked on the boats or the boat scene between him and Kratos. That was an uh, those scenes were absolutely gorgeous. Like I, in my opinion, one of the most important parts of the game. And he thinks that he doesn't deserve all the applause. Here's even more quotes: A third of Googlers, which are people who work for Google, they call themselves Googlers, they undervalue their own capabilities or worry about succeeding despite receiving positive peer feedback. And then the article goes even further to say that. Half of Googlers attributed their current situation or success to external factors, such as being at the right time at the right place. An Envision post from 2017, where a Facebook designer of seven months was being interviewed. The Facebook designer said, I had no idea what I'd gotten myself into. I didn't know enough to realize how little I knew. He then goes on to say, after realizing how in over my head I truly was, I fell into a pretty big tailspin into self-paralyzing imposter syndrome. I didn't know what I could possibly have to contribute in a room full of PhDs and decades of experience. This is someone who's in a FANG company, one of the highest companies, and he's having really bad imposter syndrome. So it's real. There are some things that you can do about it, though, and here's what you can do about it. Talk to people about it and ask for help around it. In my opinion, you are your own biggest enemy because you see things that others don't see. Now, I know for some of you that have been here before, you know on how much passion I have for gaming and how much effort that I show. But what you don't see is the mind battles that I have on myself. Also, separate your facts from feelings. Are you really bad or did you just not study and learn enough? Are you really bad at coding or did the interviewer just ask you a question on a topic that you weren't, that you didn't know enough information about? Same with that thing for an exam. Are you really, quote unquote, 
not smart or did you just not study enough? Think about what you've accomplished already. I like to do this when I am getting those negative thoughts. Stop comparing yourself to others. I do this a lot from my last college and I still do it to this day. Someone will always be smarter than you. And this may sound harsh, but it's true. If you're smarter than your friends, then you need to find a new friend group. And I 100% believe this. Don't be the smartest person in the room because if you are, then you have nothing more to learn. Never stop learning. And the last one is to keep going. My bad, one more. And then if it gets really serious, you should think about going seeing a therapist. So now we're going to start burnout. Also, I had originally this at the halfway point. So does anyone have any questions on imposter syndrome? Okay, I'm going to take that as a no. Uh, so let's get started with burnout. So what is burnout? A uh, help guide defines it as a state of emotion, physical, emotional, or mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. It occurs when you feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained, and unable to meet constant demands. I really like this picture because this zone, the optimal zone, is perfect, but each person has their different optimal zones, right? If you do too little, I'm bored. But if I do too much, then I burn out. This optimal zone is different for everybody, whether or not you do a little bit a day or everything one day, and it produces results. Find your optimal zone. What it feels like for me. For me, it's a mental exhaustion where I don't want to do any more grinding. I've been in the zone for a few weeks or months, and I can't force myself to do any more to the typo. <laughs> I can't force myself to do any more. Now, for me personally, I have a problem with burnout. It makes me think I'm lazy when I've been in the zone for a few weeks. When I realize this, I try to force myself to, look, to do a little bit of something. But when I can't do it, imposter syndrome then kicks in. Thoughts like, I'm useless. How am I supposed to make it to the big leagues if I burn out this quickly? On the left is a picture or a diagram, which I really like. The first, or the slippery slope of burnout. The first thing is, I won't be successful, right? I want money, power, promotion. I'm not afraid to work for it. Second one, I can do it all. I'm a high achiever. I can juggle all the balls. I can do all the code. And then the third one, you're a little bit overwhelmed. You keep saying yes to everything, but your list just keeps getting longer and longer and longer. And then here's where it starts kicking in. I'm not good. I'm not doing a good job. I'm losing my confidence and motivation as I can't keep on top of everything. Five, I have to keep going. I can't admit that I can't cope. I'm not a quitter. Until lastly, you have nothing left. You can barely manage a small task and you really have to rest. So now in this, uh, if you can see my cursor on the right hand side, the, the green squares, that was my GitHub for, I think it was last year, right? So you can see majority of June into, into the start of August, right? I, I was in the zone, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like 10 or 11 weeks just in the zone. And then before September, it just drops off. That is what burnout feels like or looks like in squares. You can do something about it though. The first thing you have to do is recognize you have burnout. Now, these are two questions that a lot of people say to ask yourself if you're currently going through burnout, right? One question is to ask yourself, what are you really passionate about? And the other one is dig deep down into yourself and ask yourself, why do you really want to go to this field or hobby? Now, personally, I don't like these quotes because I stated earlier, when I do this, I try to do more work and then imposter kicks in by, I can't do this. I'm not, I'm not meant for this type of field. 
So here's what I would suggest and what works for me. Take the next few days off, if not the next few weeks. For me, I need to take possibly two weeks and then I'm back in it. I would suggest doing something other than work, right? Either play video games or read a book or go to the gym or walk. If you are working, then maybe ask your manager if you can do something else. When I was doing research for this presentation, I came across a post on Quora asking, what do I do when I'm working and I have burnout? And the post said, ask to get asked to do something else, like maybe documentation or design work. So you might want to try that. This is something that I suggest. Don't touch whatever you're working on, because if you do touch it and you can't force yourself to do it, then you're going to feel bad about it. So here's a video that I really like. It's by Psych2Go, and I have to change screens because I tested this out with Dan. You cannot share audio through Discord, so I'm going to exit out. If it would, okay, there you go. I'm going to go over to Discord, share Windows, and then here we go. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Um, I'm going to lower the volume and then. Hey, psych 2 goers welcome okay. back to another brand you new video. You guys can hear it? Why does it seem like you spend most of your time in bed, lying down and not doing much lately? Are you someone who easily gets tired and doesn't feel like doing anything? Do you label this kind of behavior as mere laziness and nothing more? There's actually a lot of overlap between laziness and burnout that can make it difficult to differentiate between the two. Burnout is a negative state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive stress and inability to cope with it. And as of 2010, a survey reported that approximately 75% of adults in the United States alone have experienced symptoms of burnout, with over 40% of cases being more severe. Now, more than ever, it's become imperative to educate and better understand the nature of burnout. So with that said, here are six telltale signs that what you're experiencing right now isn't actually laziness, but burnout. Number one, you feel disconnected from everything. Are you going through the motions of every day as if on autopilot? Is there a persistent feeling of being detached from your own self? If you're suffering from burnout, one of the things you might be experiencing but don't quite realize or understand is depersonalization. People experiencing depersonalization, most commonly those struggling with trauma, report feeling a strange sort of emotional numbness or emptiness as if they were watching life from outside of themselves. They don't feel like themselves anymore. They don't feel engaged by anything and they constantly struggle with the overwhelming sense of helplessness and inability to take back control of their lives. Number two, you used to be motivated. Laziness is a character trait and character traits tend to remain stable over time. A lazy person does never feel like exerting effort or applying themselves to things. But if you used to be self-motivated and high achieving, often excelling in certain areas and have only recently become exhausted, apathetic and unmotivated, then it's more likely that you're suffering from burnout and not laziness like most people would think. Number three, you used to be passionate. A clear difference between someone who's burnt out and someone who's lazy is that the former used to have things they were passionate about, but may now be struggling to find interest or enjoyment in anymore. Whether it's a talent, a sport, or just your academic or professional performance in general, Burnout can make it hard for you to do the things you once loved or felt passionate about. You might even come to hate or resent it because of how much you overworked yourself and pushed yourself to the brink because of it. Ouch. Number four, you've become moody and irritable. Do you suddenly find yourself snappy and easily irritated? Do you often feel emotionally out of control nowadays and don't know why? Moodiness and irritability are common but often overlooked signs of burnout. So if you start to have trouble controlling your emotions, especially when it never used to be a problem for you, this might be the reason why. Lazy people, on the other hand, are a stark contrast to this because they're often very relaxed, laid back, placid, and unaffected by things. Number five, you've neglected your self-care. One of the most distressing warning signs that someone may be emotionally and physically burnt out is if you start neglecting your self-care and socially withdraw from others. There are concerning changes in your eating and or sleeping patterns. 
You stop making an effort to groom yourself or look good, and you tend to spend most of your time by yourself doing nothing because you're so easily exhausted by even the simplest of tasks. The difference between being burnt out and laziness are starkly in the fact that you weren't always this way. And number six, these changes happened gradually. Finally, but perhaps most importantly, something you should know about burnout is that it develops in stages. So all the points mentioned before, losing interest and motivation, especially in things we used to love, feeling detached from yourself and disconnected from everything around you, socially withdrawing and neglecting your self-care, won't just happen overnight. Studies show that there are actually five major stages of burnout, each with increasing degrees of severity. The honeymoon phase, the onset of stress, chronic stress, burnout, and habitual burnout. Many people begin to experience symptoms as early as the second phase, when there is still a moderate amount of stress, but optimism, interest, motivation, and performance may already start declining. And by the time you reach the fifth and final stage, burnout has already become so embedded in your life that the persistent mental and physical fatigue become more intense and harder to treat, making you more vulnerable to developing depression and anxiety. Spotting the signs of burnout early makes it all the more easier for you to get help and recover from it. That's why it's so important to raise awareness about burnout instead of simply dismissing it as laziness, like most people tend to do. So if you or anyone you know may be suffering from mental or emotional burnout, please don't hesitate to reach out to a mental health care professional today and talk to them about it. If you find this video helpful, be sure to hit so i really like this video because or i really like this youtuber i will put the link in workshop text uh, i'm going to now switch back to screen one and continue on with the workshop there we go uh da -da -da, slide from current slide oh okay well you're not supposed to see that there we go uh that's all good right yes okay so that video showed if you are lazy or you're just burnt out. Now, a majority of us are CS. If not, I'm going to assume that 90% of us are all computer science majors here. And we all have really high goals, dreams, and we're all putting in a lot of work. So if you ever doubt yourself about being lazy, then definitely check out this YouTube video. So now... We went over everything, or maybe not everything, but we dug a lot into the negative thoughts. So I'm trying to end it with some inspiration. The first thing, you are very smart. We're all computer science, if not 90% of us computer science majors here, right? If you were not smart, you would not survive in this field. Second thing, you got this, right? You guys got this. Just keep at it. I promise. And I am. I am a visual representation. <laughs> yes, James, I will. I am a visual representation that you got this. This one, I actually found this in a Facebook meme page. On <laughs> So coding, it's a skill and it develops it and developing that skill takes time. You have to practice and repeat everything you code. You make it a little easier to develop the logic. So keep doing. For keep going, you're doing great. And then the last one is another YouTube video, which is motivational minute number one, believe in yourself. So I am now going to <clears throat> change screens again, change windows, screen. Nope, nope, not, not screen. Uh, okay, there we go. So now we're going to go back here. X this out and play this. I had some tantrums of saying, I can't do this. This is too hard. When I was a kid and comparing myself to everyone else and saying, I can't do it, I'll never be able to do that. My parents always sat me down and said, look, Nick, yes, there are things that you can't do, but don't say I can't do it. Ask yourself, how can I do it? You know, there's ways around it. You can get from one side of the mountain to another, but you don't just have to walk over it. Maybe you can go underneath it or around it or, or there's always ways in in achieving the same goal the way that i've achieved in my life doesn't always look the same for everyone else but the key to that success was i believed in myself if someone else could do something then i could try and work out how it starts with believing in yourself 
believe in yourself. Oh, whoops. Did I just ruin the recording? Please say no. Okay. Um, slideshow from current slide. Okay. So now that you know a little bit about my stories and we know what the signs look like, or at least some of them, would anyone here like to share their story? Um, I, I don't really have like a lot to share on this, um, but I did kind of promise Brian I would contribute to his workshop. Um, so I guess, um, if I, and like, this isn't like anything like super, um, important either, but, um, just if I wanted to share like my experiences, um, with imposter syndrome um, from the perspective of um, uh, being like a, 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 like a female person um, in a male dominated field. Um, also coming from the perspective of um, like, I'm also like a white person, so I don't, um, I don't have a universal experience. Um, this is just my experience. Um, but having um, low representation in my field, like I really only, like in, in all of my computer science classes, um, like except for maybe some of the really um, entry level course, entry level courses, um, there's really only like, seriously at two two or three out of every 20 students were you know female or um and so uh it's it's sort of um like being in a being in a room of people that um sort of being like not necessarily like outnumbered but just like with that sort of like low representation, um, definitely feeling like I don't really belong um, in computer science. Um, uh, I've definitely felt like less likely to speak up um, with um, in interaction. Um, and like there are programs to encourage um, women in, in technology, um, like Girls Who Code, um, I did, I did a bunch of those in, in high school. Um, and, and those are great. Um, but like at the same time, those kinds of, um, programs also kind of make me wonder whether or not I've actually like, whether say, like, say I, I got a position somewhere. It, it does make me wonder whether I actually earned that position or it's like a diversity hire. Um, uh, and I've definitely already seen that um, applying for internships and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's it. I, at least that's my experience with uh, imposter syndrome. Yeah, and um, I went over uh, the thoughts. So what you're having is definitely imposter syndrome. Um, keep on applying, Emily. Right, you're doing great work for the IEEE. Right, a lot of us really like having you around. You're cool person and show with. And I hope to be, or I hope to see your successes in the future. And I do hope that you keep with this career path of yours. And I hope that you'll make it one day. Would anyone else like to share their story? Yeah, actually, I'd like to build on what Emily said. Go ahead. Um, Go. So... I think a little bit of backstory about myself is I'm, I'm a transfer student. Um, I transferred in last spring, but um, I, I'm transferring in from a career. So I actually, I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in architecture. And I was working for a couple of years in Manhattan at a really, really big global architecture firm. And I remember when I got my job that I was like, I'm not certainly like my classmates were more qualified like I didn't belong at this big firm 
that everybody sort of recognizes and um uh, it felt very very strongly that I had imposter syndrome and I didn't belong there um and after a couple of years of working there that feeling started to go away that I realized that I I was capable that I had the skills that um and that whatever I didn't have I was learning um and I was doing really well in my firm so it was that imposter syndrome started to go away and um then pandemic things happened and I started to reassess whether I wanted to stay in the field of architecture. And there's a bunch of reasons why ultimately I decided not to, but that's why I'm back in school now because the parts of my job in architecture that I liked the most were actually um, coding related. So that's why I decided to come back to school. And um, I wanted to attend this workshop specifically because I'm only a couple semesters in and I'm sort of doing the speed run on the computer science degree, but um, I find myself now being in the exact same place I was three, four years ago saying like, oh, I'm not smart enough. Like everybody here is way smarter than I am. And like, did I make the wrong choice uh, leaving my career or whatever? Um, but I have to keep reminding myself that like, I felt that I was in this exact same position in a different field and it, it too shall pass that um, despite how strong these feelings of imposter syndrome and burnout are, that it's uh, that it's temporary, and that um, you know, reminding myself and maybe it's helpful for others too that um, nobody quite brings the exact same skill set to the table as you do or I do. So, uh, reminding myself that I have a unique experience that I can contribute to an interview or to a uh, a job in computer science. So uh, that's what I've always been, that's what I've learned to sort of teach myself and tell myself over the years that um, everybody's unique and that just because somebody is better at one thing than I am doesn't mean that um, I don't bring something different to the table and that my experience is just as valid and just as important. So. Yeah, 100% agree. Uh, first of all, welcome to you Albany Computer Science. Um, I'm glad that you brought up something that you recognized or something that you tell yourself to keep on going for you. You guys saw what I do to help myself. I take a few days off or possibly a few weeks. And what she does is she tells herself that she should be here and that she's dealt with this in the past. And her experience is, is what ultimately leads her to keep on going. You guys may have some of your own. Um, I don't, I don't know the work I was looking for, but you guys may have <clears throat> some symptoms or some signs that you guys like to go to in order to say, like, hey, like, this is okay. Just keep on going forward. So thank you also for sharing. Uh, would anybody else like to go and possibly share their story, whether it be on imposter syndrome or burnout? Well, yeah, I'll share, uh, I guess. Yeah, so... um. I guess when I started uh, CompSci, I felt like pretty bad uh, imposter syndrome because I didn't grow up like around technology. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I kind of had the belief that everyone else did or the people that did, I was like leave behind them. And uh, so that kind of got my head. And I kind of had like in my head, like, oh, if you didn't start out doing it, like you're just not meant for it, which is... Honestly, I know now kind of like the if you're not immediately great at something, put it down mindset, which is not realistic at all. But you know, uh, I had that and it has some effect, I guess I still do. Um, but it's pretty lessened now. It become kind of learn more just about regular things and also like taught stuff to other people and they were trying to learn as well. Um, after I learned it, it, it kind of solidified more that I uh, I knew my stuff. Um, when you get into something new, like when I get into something new and I have to learn it, I still feel that, but I, I, I think it's to a lesser degree. Um, I, I think burnout, especially too, when I would like try to push myself to get stuff done just for like something related to a resume or something, I just didn't want to do it. I definitely felt like uh, I don't want to do this right now. Like it's just putting me through like mental anguish. So 
So at that point, I would like Tyler just be like, "All right, stop all hands," because you're not <laughs> you're not gonna be doing anything worthwhile if you're gonna be feeling like this. So when I would do that, I would probably just go out and chill out for a second, and actually think about something I did want to work on, or if I didn't want to work on anything, just wait until I thought of something I wanted to work on. In the meantime, just kind of you know, uh, just hang out, <laughs> just chill. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent agree. Uh, so you heard from me. You heard from I want. Uh, I'm gonna. I may say your name wrong, but Liana, and you've heard from Matt. Three different people deal with things three different ways. So there's not one correct way of dealing with things. We've all recognized patterns, and we've all have our own thing of our own situations to deal with those patterns, or or how to deal with imposter syndrome and or burnout. Uh, would anybody else like to share theirs? You're not forced to. It's just if you want to. Okay. Um... Hey, guys. How you guys doing today? Doing good. Doing good. Okay. So I, 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 I guess I did have imposter syndrome coming into the UAlbany CS. I guess for a while I was telling myself, you know, like, like, oh, one of these days I'm gonna hit a class that's gonna screw me over so bad that I'm just gonna drop into like infinite. And it happened, it stayed like that probably all the way to like last semester. Now, uh, I, can we talk about how we got over our imposter syndrome or do we just kind of stick to kind of that? You can talk about whatever you want to talk about. If you want to tell a story mm -hmm. on how you made it to here, whether it be imposter syndrome or burnout, the floor is all yours. So, well, one of the things that really happened with the imposter syndrome, and I know I'm going to sound like a total gym bro here, but I'm not even joking with you guys. It was the gym. I mean, I started out basically not being able to push any weight. And over the span of like less than two years, you know, I saw incredible progress, like progress that like was kind of synonymous with what I was doing. Like, you know, I was seeing you know, results. One of the things that really helped me out is when some dude has been in the gym for like five years saying you're pushing more weight than me. I'm like, Holy shit, I fit this bill. Can do this. There was that's what kind of really opened my eyes. So I'm like, yeah, I could fucking do whatever the fuck I feel like. And I guess that kind of helped me out really in mentally speaking, you know, with everything else pretty much with school, confidence and everything like that. Now I'm not saying the gym is the, you know, end all be all, but I'm just giving my, you know, two cents that that's kind of what helped me out. So I like how you brought you you swap the top from pure science to gym because imposter syndrome doesn't isn't just computer science right it can be writing a book or in your case the gym so i like how you took what we were doing and uh told us a story on how you on how you ex uh i can't talk how you related that to the gym so thank you for sharing um, would anybody else like to go? I will share because Brian asked me to share. I Thank do not you. have imposter syndrome. I am actually just an imposter. I am very, very bad at computer science, but people think I'm very good at it for some reason. I still haven't figured out why. I'm really good at Googling stuff, and that's about it. Um, I think, honestly, though, one of the hardest things is realizing that you can be a very good programmer and be very, very bad at computer science. They're not the same thing, and when people realize that for the first time, when they realize, okay, I can write a program, I can write any program in a programming language, but then they realize I haven't written it in the optimal manner, X, Y, Z, this is terrible and would never pass industry regulations because I've written an algorithm that runs an exponential time when I could have written an algorithm that takes linear time. It's, uh, it, it's really hard to get over that aspect of it. That's what really hit me freshman year when coming into college I had I had a lot of programming experience but I definitely was not a computer scientist and just realizing that oh my god I can't actually program like thinking like oh yeah I I can program whatever the heck I want I'm pretty good at this and then getting hit with the 
oh my god, I can program whatever I want, but I'm actually not programming optimal solutions at all, is like a huge blow to one's self-confidence. It was a huge blow to my self-confidence when I first came in. Um, and really, to get over that, the only the only thing that really helped me get over that was to just practice, honestly. Every single, uh, every week, I would do some lead code questions, not lead code, code wars questions, and really just try and get, learn how to implement optimal solutions to some of these problems. And that's what really helped me get through that portion of my imposter syndrome. But in, in reality, I, I am actually, people seem to still think that I'm very good at computer science, which is, it, it's very false. I, I still don't understand why. Okay, back to you, Brian. Thank you for sharing, James. So for those of you that don't know James, I don't know how many of you have been here or heard of him. He is currently getting his PhD. In... I shouldn't be. I should not have gotten <laughs> into this program. I still don't understand how I got into this program. See? There you go. Another sign of positive. He is going for his PhD in computer science. He's going to be a doctor of computer science. And he has no idea how he got in. I love it. Everyone's sharing their own experiences, what they've done to get over it, and it's a great feeling. Um, would anyone else? You don't have to. It's up to you. Okay, I'm going to assume that is a no. Thank you all for sharing your story. We still have two more slides, or technically one more after this. So now, my final thoughts on this is you're not alone in both of these aspects both literally and figuratively, you're both not alone. We've, a majority of us have shared our stories and what we did to get over them. Everyone has their day one and everyone also learns at different times. And we've all felt dumb or we've all felt like we couldn't fix that one bug that's been driving us nuts. And this, this last thing is if you're really struggling with a skill or a hobby, and or you're thinking about quitting ask yourself why do you want to do that right if it's a goal of yours to do xyz within the field then don't quit i had to ask so when i was struggling during my freshman and sophomore years of college i had a lot of imposter syndrome same amount as some people here i'm not smart enough people are way smarter than me i can't do this and so i turned to my discord buddies at the time and just like look like I don't know if I can do this. And then, and then they asked me to like, all right, why do you want a computer science degree? I said, to make games. They said, why? So then I went the whole entire story of how, you know, games are there for me and yada, yada, yada. Majority have heard this all before. And then they said, okay, good. Now, why are you quitting computer science? I'm just like, that's a good question. I'm not. So talk to people, talking to people really, really helps. And then also for the last slide, it's just the references. So for me, that is the end of the workshop.